Good evening, welcome to Mashiach Mystery Series. So this evening we are going to begin a new series, a new discussion about Mashiach. We're going to go back to the basics. So, Vezos Hashem, beginning tonight, we're going to start um, discussing in detail what is the what is the whole purpose of Yemaisa Mashiach. What is what is Mashiach all about? So, we know that in Torah there are many different. Uh, sources, there are many different um, opinions in every single aspect of Torah, and uh, Mashiach is no different. However, um, it, it would seem that in uh, the Rebbe's understanding of Torah in general, especially um, Mashiach, the Rebbe seems to find connections and uh, build bridges between a lot of the different ways of understanding different opinions in Torah. So therefore, although we'll see that there are many different explanations and many different ways of understanding what Mashiach is about, but at the same time, um, they're all connected. So I think tonight we're going to uh, we're going to discuss um, <coughs> three ways of understanding. What the what the whole concept of Mashiach is all about? Three ways of understanding. So now, just before I begin, I want to say that most of what I'm going to say now uh, this evening is, um, and uh, probably in future uh, shiurim sessions as well, is based on uh, the safer, a new safer, an unbelievable safer called the Yonei Shel Mashiach, which is uh, <coughs> basically a collection of. Um, most of the Rebbe's explanations um, in Sichas and Maimorim all about Moshiach, and he weaves everything to, uh, and he weaves everything together and explains how all the different Sichas come together and complement each other. So, <coughs> so it would seem, getting back to our topic, uh, our main topic. And so, so, what is the concept of Moshiach? What is Moshiach all about? So, it would seem that we could divide it into three different uh, levels. Three different perspectives. So well, there's the understanding of what is Mashiach according to Chakira, according to philosophy, Jewish philosophy, which that would seem to be the Rambam's position, the way Rambam understands <coughs> Mashiach in um, um, based on Meir uh, Nevuchim and also things that the Rambam says in Hilchus Teshuva. A deeper understanding of Mashiach is understanding. Mashiach from more of a Torah point of view, a halachic point of view. And then understanding <coughs> Mashiach from the from from the um, from the perspective of Chassidus. So now it seems that according to all explanations, so we Mashiach is the ultimate goal. Right? Mashiach seems to be th- a time of perfection when the world, when people, when they reach their perfection, that's what Mashiach is about. So the different ways of explaining what Mashiach is about really are all about what is the ultimate shleimus? Now, what is perfection? What is the goal of 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 man? What is the purpose of creation? So let's go through it step by step. And so in, at each level, so that we explain. So you will see that there's a difference in understanding, obviously, what the goal is, but not only what the goal is, but also how Torah and mitzvahs um, play a role in it, and uh, how Mashiach plays a role in it, and that will give us, you know, a different explanation, understanding of what Mashiach is about. Okay, so let's begin with the way the Rambam explains um, the purpose of man, the purpose of creation. Right, based on Chakira, on Jewish philosophy. So, the Rambam in his in his Hagdama, in his introduction to Peter Shemeshnayis, so the Rambam makes it pretty clear that it's a that all uh, all of the Chikrim, all of the philosophers, they came to the 
to the conclusion that every single thing that exists must have a purpose. Everything has to have a purpose. Nothing that exists doesn't have a, there's nothing that exists that, does, that doesn't have a purpose. So what is the purpose of everything? So he says, so if we look around the world, we'll come to the conclusion that everything that exists in the world is created for the purpose to serve man. Everything, right? All of the, all the other, all, of, all the animals, all the plants, right? Every, all the inanimate matter. Everything is here to serve man. The sun, the moon, the stars. Everything is here for, 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 for it to serve us. We are the ultimate purpose of creation. But that, of course, only beckons the question. Says the Rambam. Well, what is the purpose of man? So, what is the purpose? Just to live, just to eat and drink, and to just enjoy yourself? He says that. When, if you think about it, you'll see that the ultimate goal of man is that uh, he should come to a, he should be able, that he should, um, he should understand things, basically, he says. Oh, that he should use his mind, he should come to intellectual understanding of intellectual things. And in that itself, says the Rambam, the ultimate goal is that he should come to an understanding of Hashem. So in other words, According to the according to Hakira, according to Jewish philosophy, the ultimate purpose of everything is for man, and the ultimate purpose of man is that he should come to an understanding and a knowledge of Hashem. That's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate. That's the greatest. That's the greatest thing that a person can reach. So, in Imer Nevuchim, the Rambam explains that that also explains the purpose of mitzvahs. What's the purpose of a mitzvah? He says every single mitzvah is another way of the person refining himself, right? The whole purpose of mitzvahs, he says, is to, is to distance a person from midas rois and um, to and to uh, get him used to doing good things, and that way he'll be, he'll be able to um, refine himself and he'll be able to come to a greater understanding of Hashem. So according to this way of understanding Torah and Mitzvahs, this way of understanding the purpose of creation, so what is the ultimate goal? How will that play out practically speaking? So that's what the Rambam says in Hilchas Tshuva. The Rambam Hilchas Tshuva talks about reward and punishment. And over there he says the ultimate reward, the ultimate goal is Olam Haba. So what is Olam Haba? So in Hilchas Tshuva he says like this. He says, Atoiva atzvuna l'tzadikim hichai ha'olam haba. What is the ultimate goodness which is hid, hidden for tzaddikim is the life in the world to come. Vehi hachayim she'ein mavis imahem. He says this is the life that there is no death. Vahatoiva she'ein imara. And this is the goodness that there is no evil with it. Hu shekasu v'toyra l'manitav lach v'harachta yamen. This is what it says in the Torah that it will be good for you and you'll have lengthy days. And he continues that ha'ilam haba ein boi guf u'gviyam. Says the world to come, according to the Rambam, Olam Haba will not have a body. Ella nafshes at tzadikim bovad. There will only be the souls of the righteous. Beloy guf kamalachet hashal. Without a body, just like the ministering angels. In other words, if the ultimate purpose is to come to an understanding of Hashem, so when will a person come to that understanding? So when a person has a physical body, the physical body is limiting. It limits. You want to, you, you're not, it's not possible to have a complete understanding of Hashem. So the Rambam says that the ultimate goal is that the soul should leave the body, and then the soul will be able to have a, a true understanding and a true appreciation of Hashem. And that's the ultimate goal. So how does Yemaisa Mashiach? How does so how does Mashiach come into this this whole thing? Similarly, the ultimate goal is that the soul should leave the body. So that is understood based on what the Rambam continues over there in Hilchas Tshuva. The Rambam actually explains this itself. So, he asks a question. He says that, we know, and over here in Perak Tes Halacha Aleph, he says, we know that the ultimate reward is Olam Haba. So, what's with all the other reward and punishment that's mentioned in the Torah? It says that if you obey Hashem and fulfill Hashem's mitzvahs, then Hashem will reward you with all these... Uh, with all these physical uh, physical things, and if you don't listen to Hashem, then Hashem will punish you. What's that all about? So, 
In the middle, in the middle of the the, the halacha, the Rambam says, "Alakachu hechreya shel kol advarim." This is the idea that Hakadosh Baruch Hu nasan lanu Torah. Hashem gave us the Torah. Zu eitz chaim he v'chol ha'isa kol akosu bei v'yoydi dey gemura. Anyone who does everything that it's written, that's written in Torah, and he knows the Torah, zoycha balachai ha'elam haba. He will merit the life in the world to come. Then he says, "Vivtichanu b'tayra." The Torah promises us, "Shem nasa oisa b'simcha uveteivas nefesh." That if we will fulfill Torah and mitzvahs with joy, v'nega b'chachmasa tamid, and we'll constantly delve into its wisdom, sheyasu mimenu kol hadvarim hamaynim oisanu min laasa oisa. That Hashem will remove anything that prevents us from fulfilling Torah. In other words, what the Rambam is saying is that the Physical rewards that are mentioned in Torah are not an end for themselves. Basically what they are, it's Hashem giving us the ability that we shouldn't have any obstacles, we shouldn't have anything holding us back from being able to fulfill Torah mitzvahs properly. And so when Hashem rewards us, rewards us with all these physical things, then we'll be able to learn Torah mitzvahs properly, and then through that we will be zoicha, we will merit the world to come. And in the next halacha, the Rambam explains that this is exactly the same, this is exactly the whole idea of Mashiach. He says, That's why all Jews, they desired Yemaisa Mashiach. In order that they should rest from the other kingdoms around. They don't allow them to fulfill Terim properly. And will have rest. And in Yemaisa Mashiach will increase our knowledge. In order that we should merit to life in the world to come. Because in those days, knowledge and wisdom and truth will increase. Like it says, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem. It says, No longer will one man teach his brother and teach his friend. And it says, Hashem says, He will remove the heart of, I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh. In other words, what he's saying is, is that Yemais HaMashiach is just a stepping stone in order to reach Elam Haba. So it's true that in Yemais HaMashiach we'll have a greater knowledge of Hashem. So in a certain sense, Man will reach closer to his ultimate purpose, which is knowledge of Hashem. But that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is Ilum Haba, when the soul will leave the body. So based on this understanding of Yemaisa Mashiach, this also explains who, what type of person Mashiach will be. What, type, what, what kind of person is Mashiach? He says... So it says, this king who will arise from um, the seed of David will be a descendant of King uh, of David HaMelech. He says he will be more wise than Shlomo HaMelech, who is the wisest of all men. He will be another who is close to Maishra Rabbeinu, which by the way, the Ramah earlier explained that a Navi is also someone who shows on his, uh, someone who has, who attains a high level of, of wisdom. That's, that, such a person is a, is the type of person who uh, merits Navua, merits prophecy. So Mashiach will be a Bal Chachma, he will be a wise man, he will be a Navi, he'll be a prophet. And therefore he'll teach all the nation, he'll show them the ways of Hashem. And as, and as he explains, and then he says, he says, what's the ultimate goal? It's Elam He says, what is Yemais HaMashiach? It's this world. In other words, what he's saying is, is that, same point again, is that Mashiach is just a stepping stone for the ultimate goal, which is Elam Haba. And Mashiach will be the person, the wisest of all men, that will be able to um, carry out that purpose, which is to bring chachma, uh, bring wisdom, wisdom of Hashem to the Jewish people. So this is the way. This is the this is the way we under, this is the way we understand the whole concept of Yemaisa Mashiach, according to Hakira, according to philosophy. In other words, 
According to Chakira, the ultimate goal of, the ultimate purpose of man is to attain knowledge of Hashem. When will you attain that? Only in Elam Haba. And through Yemaisa Mashiach, when we'll have, we'll be free from everything, then we'll be able to serve Hashem properly and reach the ultimate knowledge of Hashem that's possible in this world. And through that, we'll, we'll be Zechat Elam Haba. Now, it would seem that the Rambam himself in Mishnah Torah actually explains Mashiach and Hilchas Malachim in a little bit of a different way. But in order to understand that, let's first preface what the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, in Shah Yechud Vemuna Perg Zayn. Alter Rebbe gives a different explanation of what the ultimate purpose of Mashiach is, the ultimate purpose of creation is. Says, it's known to everybody, the ultimate purpose of creation, who bishvil his galus malchusa yizbarich, is in order that Hashem's kingship should be revealed. In other words, Hashem, so to say, he wanted to be a king. Now, what does it mean that, that he wanted to be a king? What does that show and what does that mean exactly? So, Says ain't melech beloy am. Says you, there can't be a king if there isn't a nation. The whole the whole concept of a king is that he has subjects and his subjects fulfill his will. So likewise, what is the purpose of creation? The purpose of creation is that we should be Hashem's avadim. We should be Hashem's servants. We should serve Hashem. And how do we do that? Through Torah and mitzvahs. Torah and mitzvahs are Hashem's commandments. They are the commandments of the king. Of, of, of the supreme king of all kings, Melech Malchem Hamlochem. And uh, through fulfilling Torah mitzvahs, that's how we fulfill the, the purpose of creation. Now, the purpose of creation, according to this explanation, is almost the opposite of the way we understand it according to Chakira. According to Chakira, it would seem the whole idea is that man should, should have knowledge, he should have understanding, he should appreciate Hashem, appreciate Hashem's greatness and oneness. But... According to according to the, the, the way the Alter Rebbe is explaining over here, it's exactly the opposite. The purpose of creation is that we should be avadim, that we should serve Hashem. Which the whole idea of an evad is kabbalah soil. You accept Hashem's will and you do it because that's what Hashem wants. On the contrary, it's not so important that you understand it. It's not so important. An evad doesn't have to understand. An evad doesn't have to understand. An evad has to do what Hashem wants. Okay, it happens to be Hashem also wants us to understand. But the ultimate goal is f- to fulfill Hashem's will. Yeah? And that's how we f- fulfill the, pur- uh, the, the purpose of creation. So when did that all start? That all started Matan Torah, right? Really, it's Yis Mitzrayim, Matan Torah. Hashem gave us Torah mitzvahs, right? And really, the whole purpose of Matan Torah, according to this explanation, wasn't just, wasn't just the experience of Matan Torah, was that we should carry out the mitzvahs that Hashem gave us in Matan Torah, and through that, you have his galus malchuse ba'olam. Hashem's kingship is revealed in the world. So when will we have the ultimate purpose? The ultimate purpose when we'll fulfill all of Hashem's mitzvahs properly. In other words, that Hashem's kingship will be revealed in the world. When, it, when, when will that be? That will be in Yemei Mashiach. So first of all, just to bring out the idea, the whole concept of a melech in general is according to Chassidus, is this concept. The whole concept of a melech, Tzamech Tzedek explains in Derech Mitzvah Secha, is that he is the conduit to bring Malchus Hashem into the world. It says David HaMelech, he's, he's someone who's totally bottled to, uh, to Hashem's Malchus. And his, the whole purpose of the king is that through everybody being bottled to him, they're also bottled to Hashem. So that's in general the purpose of, of a king. So the paradigm of, the ki- of a king is David HaMelech. So the Rambam says in Hilchas Melachim that Mashiach, he is the successor of David HaMelech. He is the one who's going to take what David HaMelech started to the next level, to bring Malchus Hashem into the world that there'll come a time when everyone, Jews and non-Jews alike, will, ful- be, will fulfill the will of Hashem in this world, through fulfilling Torah Mitzvahs and the non-Jews through fulfilling the Shavah Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach. And that's what the Rambam says over here in Perik Yed Aleph, Halacha Aleph, that HaMelech HaMashiach, Asid Lamed, Ulahachsa, Malchus B'Zavid L'Yoshna, HaMem Shalah HaRishayna. What is Mashiach's goal? He is going to bring back Malchus David to its original uh, original stature. 
Ubain Amikdash, he's going to build the base Amikdash of the Kabbat Nidcha Yisrael, and he'll gather in all the exiles. And what's the purpose of all that? The purpose of building the base Hamikdash and of bringing back all of the disposed Jews in, is in order to bring back all of the mitzvahs. Makrivim Kabanes, that way we'll be able we'll have a base Hamikdash, we'll be able to bring Kabanes. We'll be able to have Shemitah and Yoival, which is only possible if you have all Jews living in Eretz Yisrael. According to all of the mitzvahs which are explained in the Torah. So in other words, as the Rabbi explains in the famous, in his famous Sicha, that in, the, in, in this halacha over here, the Rambam is defining what Mashiach is about, according to halacha. So this is a second way, a deeper way of understanding the purpose of Yemaisa Mashiach. According to halacha, according to halacha, according to it's what the Alter Rabbi explains in Sha'i Yichud Vemuna, the purpose of creation is his Galus Malchus Hashem Ba'olam. How is that fulfilled through Torah Mitzvahs? When will we have the Shleimus? When will we have the ultimate of Torah Mitzvahs? In Yemaisa Mashiach. So this also explains who Mashiach is. What, what kind of person does Mashiach have to be? So in Hilchus Tshuva, the Rambam described Mashiach as the wisest of all, as, of all men. A Navi, a wise man. But in Hilchus Malachim, the Rambam gives a totally different description of Mashiach. So look in Halacha Dalit. He says, how do you know, what's the criteria for Mashiach? How do you know who's, who's Mashiach? He says, Yamin Melech mi beis David. So he says, if there stands up first of all a king, right, from the house of David, who's Haige Betayra Va'isik Ba'mitzvah Kedavid David, who learns Torah and he is involved in mitzvahs according to, like David his father. Kefi Teir Shebachsav Veshebalpeh, according to Teir Shebachsav, according to Teir Shebalpeh, so first of all, he himself, who is Mashiach, he is someone who is totally immersed in Torah. Torah mitzvahs, right? That's his own personal identity. He is someone who is like David, his father, who himself is an Evid Hashem. Second of all, V'yachiv ba kol Yisrael leilich ba. He is someone who is going to force all the Jews to, to go in the ways of Torah. So it's not just he per, himself personally, but like a king, his goal and its ultimate purpose is to get other people to fulfill Torah and Mitzvahs. Well, the Chazik Bidka, and he'll strengthen all of the uh, things that need strengthening. V'yolach and Melchem Hashem, and he'll wage the wars of Hashem. Says the Rambam, if a person does this, Hariza Becheskas Shu Mashiach, then he's a presumably Mashiach. Imas if Yitzliach, if he does all of this and is successful, V'nitzach Kol Ha'umay Shesvivav, and he conquers all the nations around, and he builds the base of Mikdash in its place, and he gathers in the remnants of the Jewish people, then then he's definitely Mashiach. In other words, what you see over here is, is that since the goal, since the whole purpose of Mashiach is about bringing about the Shlemus of Torah Mitzvahs, the ultimate completion and perfection of Torah Mitzvahs, of his Galus Malchus Hashem Ba'olam, of revealing Hashem's kingship of the world to us fulfilling his commandments. So Mashiach has to embody that himself. He himself has to be immersed in Torah. He himself has to be someone who is, in, who is getting other Jews to fulfill uh, Torah mitzvahs. And he is also the one who is going to bring back and build, rebuild the Beis HaMikdash and bring back all the Jewish people into Eretz Yisrael in order that we should actually literally, literally be able to fulfill all Torah mitzvahs. So, it would seem over here that, so it comes out an interesting thing, yeah, that, so we have these two ways of understanding what the ultimate goal of Mashiach is, right? So you have the philosophical way of looking at it, that the ultimate goal of man is to, is that he should be, uh, that he should understand the oneness of Hashem, and that's what will fulfill somewhat in Yemais Mashiach, but, only really in Olam Haba. And then there's like a halakhic way of looking at it, that the ultimate purpose of, of creation is that we should fulfill Hashem's will. And when will we do that? In Yemais HaMashiach. And that's it, right? It's not a, about getting to Olam Haba. It's about fulfilling Hashem's will, will here in this world. So it's interesting that the Rambam in the same Sefer brings out these two sort of like different and almost opposite ideas. So maybe just to give, just to explain it like this, that the truth is, is that both of these concepts are true. It just depends what perspective you're looking at it. So 
to give a an analogy, a marshal. So you have someone who hires a worker. He hires a worker to to, to build him a, build him a house. Yeah. So there's the the balabas's perspective, right? There's the boss's perspective, and then there's the worker's perspective. So from the boss's perspective, so what is he looking for? He's looking for the work to get done. That's his ultimate goal, right? Now, but what is the worker, what's his ultimate goal? Right? His ultimate goal is that he should be paid, right? He's working not because he needs a house. He's he's working because, right, because he needs because uh, he needs to provide for his family. So what's the true perspective? Well, which one is the true thing? Both things are happening at the same time. So in other words, you could say it like this, that in the, when the Rambam is speaking in the Vuchim and there's other places, the guide for the perplexed and a philosophical, from philosoph- philosophical perspective, he's talking about the, the, the way, if a, what's the ultimate, uh, what's the ultimate um, goal, what's the ultimate purpose of man, if you're just talking about the perfection of man in and of himself, right? In other words, if you're just talking about coming, so to say, from a world perspective, so what is, what is the greatest thing, what is the greatest achievement of man? The answer is, the greatest achievement of man is that he should have an understanding of Hashem. That's the greatest achievement that man could fulfill. But in the end of Hilchus Malachim, he's talking from a deeper perspective. He's saying, but at the end of the day, so, but why did Hashem create man? <laughs> so yes, if you're coming from, yeah, I, I exist, right? I exist. So why do I exist? Or not why do I exist, sorry. Yeah, in other words, so now that I exist, so what's the, what's the greatest accomplishment that I could accomplish? And then the answer is, the great, your greatest accomplishment is that you should have an understanding of Hashem. But then you can ask the question, well, why do I exist? Why did Hashem create me in the first place, right? And to that you can't say to know Hashem. Okay, well, why is it important to know Hashem? Why would Hashem want to create me in order that I should know Hashem? So the answer to that question, why did Hashem create me? Is because Hashem wanted that His will should be fulfilled, that His His malchus, His kingship should be fulfilled in, in, in the world. So, so both are true. It just depends which perspective you're coming from. If you're coming from a world perspective, from a philosophical perspective, you're looking from the perspective of man. Yeah, of course, the ultimate goal of man is that he should understand Hashem. But if you're talking from Hashem's perspective, well, why did He create man in the first place? So then you realize that it can't just be that the goal is that we should understand Hashem, but it must be that Hashem wants something for Himself, so to say, that 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 He should be king in this world. Okay, but even this explanation is not the ultimate concept of what Mashiach is all about. The ultimate concept of of creation and therefore of Mashiach is the way the Alter Rebbe explains earlier in Tanya and the Kuti Amorim. And we're very familiar with that Chassidus talks about all uh, very often, right? Which is the concept of Dir Betachtoinim. So in Tanya and Perk Lamed Vav, the Alter Rebbe says, "Vehine Mudas Eis Maimur Azal." We know what our sages say: "Shetachlas Brias Olam Hazer Hushinis Ava Hakadosh Baruch Hu Lias Le Dir Betachtoinim." The ultimate purpose of creation is that Hashem wanted a dwelling place in the lower world. Now, what does that mean that Hashem wanted a dwelling place? So we know the concept of a dwelling is that how does a person live in his own house? He's very comfortable, right? He's not putting on a show for anyone. He's being himself. So, so to say, Hashem wanted that he should have the, his ultimate revelation here in this world. And that's what the Alter Rebbe explains later, later in the parable, which means she yoyr Hashem ein Hashem wanted that his light, his infinite light, should shine. In this lowly world, in this 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 world of this place of darkness and of out of Sitra Akra Kulay, in the entire world, but Yesu says Yesu is the Yesu no mina khishik meharasabal masalyanam Hashem wanted that it should shine in this world even more than it shines in the upper worlds. And he goes on to explain that and this is accomplished through Taira. And he says that Venoida, she a Mesa Mashiach, who befrat Kisha Yichu Hamason, him Tachlus to Shlemus Brias Elam Hazar, Shalakach Nivra Mitchilasai. Mesa Mashiach, and especially 
the era of Tchiyas HaMesim, they are the ultimate purpose of creation. That's why it was created in the beginning, initially. In other words, when will this, when will this, when, when will this happen? When will, the, when will Hashem be revealed in, his, in all His glory in this world when Mashiach comes? That's what Mashiach is all about. And how do we accomplish this? So the Alter explains in the next paragraph, that's the whole concept of Torah Mitzvah. He says, He says, He says, which is the revelation of Oyen in this physical world. It's dependent on our Avaida through our Golas. What causes the reward of the Mitzvah is the Mitzvah itself. Because when a person does a Mitzvah, he draws down the revelation of the infinite light of Hashem from above downward to come into this physical world. That's what a mitzvah is. A mitzvah is Hashem's will. And as al Rebbe explains in Tanya, when you do a mitzvah, you draw down Hashem's will into this world because every mitzvah involves some physical thing. And that makes the Rebbe Tachtoinim. And when will all of this be revealed? When Mashiach comes in, in Tchia Samesim. So, this is already a third way of understanding what Mashiach is all about. So now, at first glance, it might seem that this is very similar to the second explanation. Now, what's the goal? The goal is, like we said in the second way, his galus malchus Hashem ba'olam, right? That Hashem's kingship should be revealed in, in the world. Seemingly, dear b'tachtanim is the same thing, that there should be a revelation of Hashem in the world. However, the truth is, is that they're not exactly the same thing. Because when you say that Hashem's malchus, that Hashem's kingship should be should be revealed in the world, that implies that the world is a separate entity. The world is an independent entity. We are Hashem's subjects. We are His servants. We are His avadim. And we have to fulfill His will. Diru b'tachtoinim means something much deeper than that. Diru b'tachtoinim is, based on like what the Al-Tarebbe explains in Shah Yechud Vemunah, that the truth is that the world is bottled by Metzias to Hashem. The truth is that the world is nullified in its very existence. He says that really the world is bottled Keziv Hashemesh B'Shemesh. It's like the ray of the sun in the sun. As al Rebbe explained in Shai Yechud Vemuni, the logical basis behind that explanation. But the point is, is that when Mashiach will come, what's going to be revealed is the <clears throat> that the world is not just fulfilling what Hashem wants, but in, but in essence, the world is completely bottled to Hashem. The world is, is its whole existence is just a manifestation of Hashem. And once again, the way we accomplish that is through Torah and Mitzvahs. So basically, we have over here three explanations of what the of of what Mashiach is all about, right? So there's the basic explanation, or the way, of the, the, like coming uh, according to Hakira, according to philosophy, that it's the ultimate goal is that we should have an understanding of Hashem, right? That man should reach his perfection. Deeper, according to Torah, according to Halacha, it's that Hashem should be king in the world. We should fulfill His commandments. We should be as Avadim. But even that's not the ultimate. What's really behind that is that the essence of Hashem should be revealed in the world, which means that it will be revealed how the world is completely bottle to Hashem, completely nullified in its very existence, like the ray of the sun in the sun. So maybe we could say that these three, that these three, uh, these three ways of understanding what the ultimate goal of creation is, what Yemaisa Mashiach is about, they correspond to the three levels that we speak about in Chassidus all the time, Mimale, Soiviv, and Atmos. So in general, Chassidus, it says that there's three modes, so to say, of, or should say, two modes of Hashem's revelation, and then there's the essence of Hashem. So the most basic way, the way Hashem relates to the world is called Mimale Kolalman. Mimale Kolalman means, so to say, Hashem he fills the world. In other words, Hashem um, gives every single creation in the world in a, uh, a tailor fit, a tailor fit uh, type of existence, a ty- type of life force. Right. In other words, the, t- the type of life force that Hashem gives to daimim, 
to inanimate matter is not the same thing to give to tzemeach, to things that grow, and chai, animals, and people. Everything in the world has, so to say, a different type of chai, it's a different type of life force from Hashem, that's mamali kolam. Hashem, so to say, is lowering himself down into the into the limitations of, of creation and of nature, and he's creating the world, so to say, according to each thing, according to what it needs. That's the concept of Mamali Kalalman. And then the concept of Seyvah Kalalman. Seyvah Kalalman means that Hashem transcends all worlds. Well, this is a level of Hashem which, so to say, is not felt in creation. It, so to say, only affects the, from, from the outside. It's similar to in a person's body, so the, he has... Uh, he has the, the highest kloli, right? The fact you have, there's an, in every part of your body, there's an individual type of chayas, right? There's an individual type of life force. In your hand, you have one type of chayas, and you had another type of chayas. And then the highest kloli is, and there's an all-encompassing life force that's not tailor-fit to each individual part of your body. So Hashem also relates to the world, also in a way of save of kalalman. But even then, even Soiviv, which is you know a level, so to say, which transcends the particulars of creation, at the end of the day, it's called Soiviv Kalalman. It still relates to the world. The highest level of Hashem is Atmos, the essence of Hashem, which is beyond everything, which is beyond definition, beyond description, and we can't uh, and and we can't give it any expl- we can't give it any definition whatsoever. So maybe we could say like this. So what's the difference between these three levels? Is so. If a person relates to Hashem at the level of Mamali Kalalman, so what does that mean? That means that this is, so to say, the way Hashem is giving each thing its individual identity. So at this level, a person feels that he exists, right? And he has his own purpose, and he has his own goal. And what's his ultimate goal? His ultimate goal is that he should understand and appreciate and understand Hashem. It's Mamali Kalalman, right? In other words, it's my understanding, my appreciation of Hashem. That's the, 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 that's the lowest level. Then a person realizes, but at the end of the day, Hashem is beyond, so to say, He's not just my life making me exist. Hashem totally transcends creation. So then a person comes to a higher understanding that it's not about that I should have an appreciation of Hashem. On the contrary, I'm here for Hashem. I'm here to fulfill Hashem's Ratzain. I'm here to fulfill Hashem, Hashem's, uh, Hashem's will. So that's the, that's the higher level. That the ultimate goal is that Hashem's, that Hashem's purpose should be fulfilled. Hashem's kingship should be revealed in the world. That's like Seyv of Kalalman. That's Hashem who's beyond the, beyond the world. But even that's not the ultimate, because at the end of the day, there's still a world, there's still a person who's fulfilling, who's fulfilling Hashem's will. The ultimate goal is that the, the etz, atzmos, the essence of Hashem, should be revealed in this world. That's the concept of Dira B'tachtaynim. So, in other words, we, although we have three different explanations of what Yemais and Mashiach is all about, but really they're all true. They're all true. It all just depends on, uh, on which perspective you're talking about, and which level, so to say, of your relationship with, uh, which, with Hashem you have. And we should all be zoicha, that, we should, that it should all happen, take it from Yad Mamish, and we should experience this immediately. Yeah.